15th chapter. And I'm going to be reading verses 22 and 25. So to the folks on YouTube, I wish you a happy new year and pray that the Lord will bless you abundantly in 23 as he has for us. Amen. And we will go on to Exodus, the 15th chapter. I will be reading the 22nd through the 25th verse and look at your neighbor and say, there is a word from the Lord. There is a word from the Lord. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. And they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statue and an ordinance, and there he proved them. Amen. I'll speak on the day. My subject for the day is also my theme for the year. Mm. 2023, the year of divine intervention. All Amen. right. Amen. Amen. For those of maybe in the healthcare field, in the field of recovery, mental illness, we realize that sometimes there comes a time when an intervention is necessary. We find that the course that a person is taking with their life and the direction of which they're going, we find them headed to certain destruction. Amen. And sometimes family members and loved ones say, well, there is something that must be done. Otherwise, this is not going to end well. And then you have an in intervention. Amen. There are times I know in, in California when a person has a mental episode and the police are called, the code is 5150. 5150 means that we have a person who is a danger or a harm to themselves or to others, and we have the right to intervene because we are, after all, free people. We are, after all, people who can choose to live our life and do whatever we want to with our lives as a gift from God. But some people take that to such extremes that an intervention becomes necessary. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're at the point to where drugs are about to destroy them and family members and folks who are concerned say, let's intervene and get them some help. This is help that they did not ask for and a lot of times did not even want. But it buys you the time that hopefully something will get through. Amen. Sometimes in the life of believers, God has to do an intervention. Sometimes we find ourselves so far off track, so far out of the will of God, that an intervention is necessary to keep us and save us from destruction. Amen. Amen. And as we see in the book of Exodus, let me just give you a little information leading up to where we are right now. This is when the children of Israel were delivered from Egypt by a mighty outstretched hand. Everybody knew that it was God because only God can part the Red Sea and allow the people to go forth on dry land. Only God can cause that same Red Sea to come back on Pharaoh's armies and wipe them off the earth. Only God could do the miracles that were required just to release them from Egypt. Only God can bring ten plagues 
and the plagues affect the Egyptians and yet did not affect the Hebrews. There were ways to know that if you didn't know that there was a God, after what you have just came through, you realize that nobody can tell me it's undeniable that God is real because God has done for me what, he, what I could not do for myself. I realized that and when they happened to look back and they saw the Red Sea closing in on Pharaoh's army and they realized for the first time in their life they were free from Pharaoh. They were free from somebody telling them how many bricks that needed to be made and how much straw they were going to be given. They were free from somebody telling them what time to get up and what time to go to sleep. They were free from somebody telling them how much they could have and what they could not have. They were free from somebody telling them how to live their life, where to live it, and on what terms. They were free people and they realized the value of what God had done. So, you know, when you really know God has done something, nobody has to pump you up. Right. Nobody has to prime in you. Nobody has to keep reminding you when you can see for yourself what God has yes. done. And Miriam, the sister of Moses, picked up a tambourine and said, you know what? I think I'll just praise God right now. Yes. And her and the women got together and had a spontaneous praise service in the desert because they were so glad Amen. of what God had done. It was fresh in the mind of the deliverance and the mighty hand of God. And when she got through praising God, Moses stood up and began to preach to the people. And Moses sang a song about the mighty power of God. And everyone was rejoicing because they were free. Amen. Mm -hmm. There's a part to freedom that a lot of people don't want to deal with. Freedom also has a cost. Freedom is not free. It means you are free from. But now you have some things that you are responsible for that the people who own you used to provide. Pharaoh used to provide food. Pharaoh used to provide lodging. Pharaoh used to provide all that was necessary for you to sustain yourself as a servant of Pharaoh. But now that there's a red sea between you and Pharaoh, now you come to the realization that I've got to provide for myself. Mm -hmm. They began to wonder. As they wandered through the wilderness. After a day, they got to thinking, you know what? We don't have anything to drink, but God will provide. We can keep on the line. It's only been a day. Sister Joyce, after two days, they started to wonder, ah, I know what God did and I'm thankful, but now I'm thirsty. Mm -hmm. And you know, thankfulness is good until thirst kicks in. And after a while, you become less thankful and more thirsty. Because now it has been three days that I have not had anything to drink. And then I bothered to say that the desert was hot. Then I bothered to say that you're in extreme conditions now. That Pharaoh, with all of the bad things he did, he provided me a certain amount of comfort, and I don't have that anymore. And now, on top of all of that, I'm thirsty. Mm -hmm. So, do you know what it feels like to be thirsty? Mm -hmm. Do you know what it feels like to go without something that you need desperately for life and not have it? Do you know what it feels like to all of a sudden find yourself in the position of having to supply yourself with something that you don't have? Mm -hmm. So they began to wonder. And after three days, they saw what? Mm -hmm. And I can imagine that their heart began to leap when they saw water. Because now I got a chance, and now I feel a little bit better. Oh, I could, if I could just get to the water, I'm sure they started to run. Because mm -hmm. they were in a hot place. They were tired. They were exhausted. And they were thirsty. And the thing that you desire is right in front of you. And you are just finally getting to it. And in their hearts were leaping with joy because there is finally water. 
Thank you, Jesus. I can imagine Miriam say, I still got my tamarind. Let me get a drink of this water, and I'll be ready to shock some more. Uh -huh. And I'm sure all of the people said, thank God, God is good. Won't he do it? And oh, they were so excited because that was water. Yes, yes, yes. Only one problem. Uh -oh. The water was bitter. Mm -hmm. Now, when it says bitter, it means you couldn't drink this water. It's just like if you had ran into salt water when you was thirsty. Yes, it was water, comprised mostly of H2O, except something about it made it not drinkable. Mm -hmm. You ever been in a situation that looked just right till you got in it? Amen. Ooh, Lord. You ever ran across something that seemed so right? Till you got in it Amen. and you found out it wasn't what Amen. it looked like. Amen. Oh my God. You know, I thought he was rich. I didn't know that was our credit cards. Oh, and now God. I got to help pay it off. Oh. I, it looked way better than that. But it, it's not what it looked like. This is bitter. Oh, Jesus. This oh. can't sustain me. This cannot sure help like me. It. And so, you know, we had Pharaoh to blame in Egypt. Now all we got is Moses. So Moses, Moses is right. you put us in this situation. Oh. You got us out there. In fact, we did it. Pharaoh might have been bad, but you know what? He did give me some water That's that right. I could drink. That's right. And now Moses, you got me at this place with water that I cannot even drink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Moses, what are we going to do? Moses, I'm a man just like you. Mm -hmm. Only thing I can do is the same thing you can do. I can pray. So yeah. a lot of times we forget that. Amen. A lot of times we do all that we can do and we say, well, at least we can pray. Yeah. After you done beg, after you done borrow, yeah. after you done stole, Ooh. after you done lied, connived, yeah. tricked, manipulated, Ooh. and everything else, and the water's still bitter. Yeah, what's mm -hmm. Moses said, I can pray. Moses cried out to God, but there was no law saying they couldn't. Mm -hmm. They cried to man. Yep. Man can only do more like my man, just like you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do the same thing you could have done. I want to pray. And God said, this is the thing. First thing you have to realize in this story, hearing God is essential to your survival. There are going to be times in 2023 where you're going to be in a position where you will have to hear from God. Because the only thing separating you from destruction mm -hmm. is hearing the voice of God. Mm -hmm. And if you've never been in that place, you may not know what the voice of God sounds like. And if you have been in that place and have not recognized that it was God, I'm going to show you some ways you can know that you can hear the voice of God. Amen. I want you to go back in your own life. Amen. When you may have been in a situation, and it depends on you know how you came up, what that situation mm -hmm. might be. Mm -hmm. But that been a situation where you were definitely going to do something different, but a voice or something told you, or you felt like, maybe you call it intuition, that I need to do this instead. Mm -hmm. And you found out when you did this, that it worked out mm -hmm. instead of that. Mm -hmm. That was the voice of God. Another way of knowing when someone's telling you to do this and you don't do it, mm -hmm. and it's a catastrophe, that was the voice of God. Yes, it was. Whether you heard and obeyed or whether you heard and did your own thing, you heard God. Mm -hmm. Look at your neighbor and say, You heard God. You heard God. Sometimes we have to understand that, that if God's voice is real, then that means we, when you go back over your life and you realize those times, when I could have been to prison, those times when I could have been killed, those times when God said go for no real reason, and I look back and find out what would have happened had I stayed. Mm -hmm. That is God. It's the same God who told you to leave when you didn't listen. It's the same God that stopped the gun from firing. Mm -hmm. Same, no different God. The same God. But all through life, he's trying to get us to hear his voice. And it is essential to his survival. So they put themselves in a place where they had to hear God. Mm -hmm. Because now, three days without water, I can't go much farther. This right here qualifies for water. I just can't drink it. 
So God, I need you to fix it. See, before you leave, before you try to find another drinking hole, you got to talk to God. Because my instincts will say, if this looks like water, but it don't taste right, I can't drink it. There's probably some water somewhere else, but I don't need to stay here because obviously this is not working. Oh my God, some people have said that about the situation right here, right now. Yeah. Situation you're in right now, I can't stay here because this is not working, but you have not prayed yet. Uh -huh. Amen. Help us. Let me pray. Mm -hmm. And when the man of God began to pray, I want you to realize what happened. Because sometimes we think that God has to hurry up and come up with a solution after we pray. But sometimes the solution is already there waiting you to pray. God didn't plant a tree. Y'all get this. God didn't plant a tree when Moses prayed. Mm -hmm. The tree was already there before the prayer was made. Before anybody had a problem with the water, the solution, are you hearing me yet? The solution was already there. You don't need to find another watering hole. God can do something about where you are right now when you pray. Uh -huh. So when you pray, God opened Moses' eyes and said, Moses, you see that tree, no, 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 no. That tree. That tree. All you need to do is put that in the water and something miraculous is going to happen. So the intervention is not another place for water because you won't make it to there. In fact, if we're not careful and it's kind of, oh, this is just coming too much too fast. I gotta give you this. If you're not careful, you will leave the bitter water, but you will take the bitterness And all of a sudden, every place you go has got bitter waters. After five husbands, after five wives, maybe it's not the water that's bitter. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh. Help me, Holy Ghost. Yeah, Lord, yeah, Lord. After four jobs, maybe everybody is not bitter. Maybe there's something bitter in me that keeps coming forth. Uh -huh. And God said, I can fix this if you're standing. Somebody said, be still and know that I am God. Because there's a part of us that wants to run. There's a part of us that just can't put up with stuff for very long. There's a part of us that's very impatient. There's a part of us that says enough is enough the very first time. There's a part of us that want to start all over every time something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. But there's a part, there's a place in you that says, be still. Be still. Be still. I know you're thirsty, but be still. I, I, I know that you really need some water, but be still. And when God shows Moses a tree, then he realized the solution was there before I even needed it. Mm. The tree was always there. And the tree was just standing there minding his own business. Yeah. Just, somebody's going to need me someday. Mm -hmm. Everybody needed water, but guess what? The water was bitter. Without the tree, the water was bitter. Mm -hmm. Well, Amen. Can I say something else? Say it. Say it. You the tree. Well, help the tree. And they shall be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. And you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the Lord. Well, help the tree. Look at your labor say, you the tree. You the tree. You the tree. Don't you, don't you leave me because you're the tree. I need you because you're the tree. I know you thought the solution was somewhere else, but you're the tree. You're the tree. The solution was right there. And then this is, this is my last point. Just because you're in a bad place doesn't mean you're outside the will of God. Remember, God led them out of Egypt. God made it so they couldn't go back. God brought them to the very place where they were. There only seems like this water is bad. But how can God bring you to a place where water and you're thirsty and not already have a solution just because it tastes bad? Come on. So God 
gets in there, then you realize. Listen to verse 26. And it said, mm -hmm. If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, mm -hmm. and will give ear to his commandments, mm -hmm. and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Mm -hmm. God said, you know what, all you got to do is listen. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have all the diseases. I know it's going around, mm -hmm. and I know everybody catching it, mm -hmm. but you don't have to catch it. That's right. Amen. Because I won't put those on you. See, the problem, we claim conditions. Mm -hmm. That God did not give us, and we take ownership of it. Mm -hmm. it, it, it before you claimed it, it was just cancer. But you know what you said? My cancer. Not cancer. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And God said, I didn't put that on you. Uh -huh. And it's not yours unless you want it. And then mm -hmm. we start to claim it. And then the doctor is really good. He said, And you know, with your condition, mm -hmm. your doctor's always, you know, uh, you're a black man. And, you're over 60, so mm -hmm. you know that you are prone to yep. high blood pressure, hypertension, diabetes. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Yep. The devil's still alive. Yep. I'm not going to let you or anybody else give me yep. some God they give me. All right? So well, then why are we talking? Let's talk about the whole story. Let's talk about why we're prone to that. Mm -hmm. It's because of our lifestyle, our lack of exercise, our poor eating, our drinking, our smoking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and our lack of reasonable price health care. Mm -hmm. When we look at the whole picture, yep. my blackness does not make me curse. Mm -hmm. My choices might. Mm -hmm. My lack of money to pay for good health care might. Mm -hmm. right. You trying to tell me something, repeating all these curses on me about I'm supposed to have this and that might if I buy into it. But I'm the one that got to buy into it. There are people that smoke their whole life and never got cancer. Mm -hmm. There are people that drink every day and live to be 110. Mm -hmm. So obviously that's a factor, but it's ultimately who's responsible. God is responsible for mm -hmm. my health. Ultimately, it is God. And if I put it in God's hand, mm -hmm. he'll regulate it. Mm -hmm. He'll take care of it. He said, I won't put none of it. The Egyptians are merely means people of the world. The Egypt was just a type of the world. When they came out of Egypt, they came out of the world through a Red Sea, which comes is the blood. Mm -hmm. They crossed over and become God's people. So now the things that happen in Egypt won't happen to you. God said, I am so close to you that you didn't bring but one pair of shoes out of Egypt and you won't need another. Mm -hmm. For 40 years, their shoes did not even wear out. Mm -hmm. For 40 years, they didn't have any clinics. In the, there wasn't an urgent care in the wilderness. For 40 years, nobody got sick. Mm -hmm. For 40 years, people wasn't killing one another. Mm -hmm. For 40 years, people who were in covenant were connected so close to God that the things that happened to everybody else didn't happen to them. God said, I got you. I'll sustain you. You say you're hungry, no problem. Bread will fall from heaven. All mm -hmm. you got to do is gather enough in the morning to last you the whole day. Don't worry about tomorrow. I got that too. And God sustained them mm -hmm. through all of their complaining, through all of their lusting for the things of Egypt. God kept them. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. But God said, you know what? Before I can take you in the Father, I got to do an intervention. Because you've gotten to the point to where you're complaining more than you're praising. Mm -hmm. Where you're worrying more than you're resting. Oh my God. Come on. You got to the point to where you let the things get to you that were never meant for you. I got to do an intervention so he used the thing they needed the most. Water. Mm -hmm. God said, you thirsty enough now to hear me. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been in a situation where if you didn't hear God? I mean, I can tell you a whole lot of stories, but it ain't my story that's going to help you. Mm -hmm. It's your story. Go back in your own mind and think about those times when you desperately needed God. And as soon as you cried out, he heard you. 
I'm watching you. God is good, God. He shepherds over us. He looks at us and he sees. Yeah. Even before the situation comes, he sees where we're headed. He said, in the route that they're going, by three days, they're going to run into some water that look good that they can't drink. Mm -hmm. And I'll just wait. Sooner or later, she's so go through the phases that it takes you to, the anxiety that it takes you to. The first stage is anger. This stuff shouldn't be there. It looked like something that is not, so I am mad. And then you begin to strike out at the people closest to you. Mm -hmm. Strike out. Y'all see this? Y'all see what Moses did? It's Moses' fault. Mm -hmm. You know, because we could have stayed. Mm -hmm. It's Moses' fault. Then you come to Moses. Moses, you see what you did for him? Yep, that's right. And you call yourself a man of God. Yep. You see what you got yep. Listen, yep. You know, Ain't no way you can be God's servant to do that because God would have known better. You should have known better. So Moses, what are you going to do? And then Moses turns the whole thing around and he goes to God. Mm -hmm. And God said, Moses, I would not have taken you this far that's right. without a solution. So know this in 20 and 23, you're going to come against some situations just like this. I need you to know that God already knew before the situation came. Amen. And God already had a plan. Don't get absorbed in the situation. Don't get destroyed by the situation because it's only a provocation. Mm -hmm. It's provoking you to see God. What do you have to go through before you see God? It's different from everybody. Some people, one bad relationship will drive them all the way to the cross. Some people, Amen. a habit is the only thing that will make them really see God. Some people, a condition in their body gets them to the point, once the doctor said there's nothing there, can I help you with a doctor? Most of the time, there is nothing they can do anyway. Mm -hmm. Your body will equip, is equipped to heal itself under the right condition. So before you go to them with their butcher knives and steroids, go to God. Amen. Because a lot of things they really just can't do. Now, not that there's nothing they can do, because some situations they really have cures for. But I get my own experience. When the doctor started talking about steroids, that's cold, but we don't really know what's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. But maybe this will help you. And if you believe it, it will help you. Now, steroids do make you feel better, but feel better don't necessarily mean that you're cured. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's two things that make you feel better and eat more. Mm -hmm. Okay, a lot of times we feel better when we eat more. Yeah. <laughs> but really, you got to go to God sometime before it gets so drastic. Mm -hmm. See, if you learn to go to God for the headaches, mm -hmm. when something bigger shows up, you already know where he is. Mm -hmm. Don't start looking for God when the doctors say cancer. Mm -hmm. You should already know who God is before that happens because it becomes a very hard journey. And, and, and what the other thing about it is, really, some procedures that we go through, truth be known, are not even necessarily needed. We won't even seek another opinion. We won't even seek God and say, I, pro I would probably be a billionaire if I was given one dollar for every hyster hysterectomy that was given that wasn't needed. Mm -hmm. Amen. whole lot of them. Not mm -hmm. needed. These folks are practicing on you. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it's wrong to go to the doctor. Don't take that out of there and go and you know say I'm not going to take my blood pressure medicine because Pastor Harris said no, right. I didn't say that. Amen. But I said your trust and your faith need to be in God. And even when you go to the doctor, you have to go praying. Amen. And if God says seek another opinion, don't ask the same doctor twice. That's right. <laughs> another opinion. Amen. Then you go find another doctor yep. and see if he said the same thing that that one said. Because mm -hmm. I've seen lots of people who found out they didn't have to have the procedure that they thought that they was going mm -hmm. to have to have. Yeah, mm -hmm. these people are in business also. Mm -hmm. And if you got good insurance, you should be surprised how much you really need something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how much you don't need it when you don't have insurance. Mm -hmm. That ought to tell you something. Mm -hmm. So let us go to God first. Because this year, divine intervention, there are going to be some people that are going to hear something that's going to be totally destructive for one doctor, and they're going to go to another. God will have already intervened.
by the time you get, or you're going to be set up for surgery, got a date and everything, and when you get ready to go, they're going to say, wait a minute, for some reason, we can't find you. You know why? Because God has been a me. God has came in and has made a difference. And the way off of anything, I don't care if it's cigarettes, drugs, alcohol, the way off is God's intervention. God comes in and he can take it so far away from you that you can find yourself still doing it and not enjoying it. That's because you asked him to take it and he's already took the pleasure from you. Mm -hmm. But you hard headed and you still doing it. But there's a reason why you're not getting everybody else thinking, oh, this is good. And you sitting around. <laughs> Did I get some bad? No, I want nothing bad. It's good for them. Mm -hmm. But when you ask God to move, it's no longer good for you or even to you. Mm -hmm. When it gets to that point, what other choice do you have but to quit? Mm -hmm. And God has to do that to some of us just to make us realize that he answered our prayer. <laughs> and when you find out that God is listening, even at times when we think we're just saying mm -hmm. something, time that you ask for something, and you get to the point where you're as desperate for whatever it is as they were for water, God will open up your eyes and he will show you something that will completely and totally change your life. Mm -hmm. And remember, what changes your life changes the lives of all the people around you because they see you. I don't care how little the child is, they see you. Mm -hmm. They see what you do. They see how you act. They see the difference. You know, I've had relatives that I like to be around them when they was drunk when I was a child, because they got really nice. <laughs> Just give them a ride to the package store. They go to the package store and they got really, they got generous. Mm -hmm. They would give you money and stuff, you know, but they don't want to be bothered. But you know what? Children see that. Yes. And they see when you get real mean. Mm -hmm. They see how you talk to mama mm -hmm. when you're under the influence mm -hmm. or something. And they see that. So guess what? When a change comes, they see that too. Amen. They say, wow. I, I see a difference in this person. And the children are intelligent, more intelligent than what we think. Mm -hmm. They can put two and two together before they even get into kindergarten. And you'd be surprised how easy it is for a child to come up with four. And he said, okay, this is not happening anymore. But now things are better at the house. I like this version of you, right? Because mm -hmm. they see. So your change is everybody's change mm -hmm. around you. Because okay. everybody sees you. Nobody's changed itself for you. The water used to be bitter, but the tree made the difference. And when you understand that you are the tree, you are the one that make the bitter water sweet. And in my prayer for 2023, that God will deal with the bitterness that you're having to deal with. Amen. And God will make it sweet. God will make it worth staying and worth being a part of and, and, and change that part. We all fight and flight is a part of all of our nature. We want to run away or we want to fight. There's a third option. Be still. Be still. And allow God. Because when you say, when that scripture says, be still and know that I am God. If I know that He's God. I can quit trying to play like I'm God. Mm -hmm. I can quit acting like I'm in charge. I can quit acting like I'm running everything. When God shows up and you realize when you want to run in nothing but your mouth. Mm -hmm. And you're not careful, you might get that knock down your throat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you have to be careful and know. Be still and know mm -hmm. that I am God. And watch God work it out. Watch God intervene in this year, Amen. 2023, the year of divine intervention. And for the folks that are on YouTube, I want you to know too. That God is actually going to be able to move in your situation. Because I know you can't do nothing for them children. Don't worry about it. Give them to God. I know you want to quit, but you haven't been able to. Don't worry about it. <coughs> Give it to God. And I know it's not working out like you thought it was going to work out on the job. And you really want to quit. And it became very bitter to you. 
But before you take that same bitterness to another job, pray and give it to God, and he can make it a sweet place to retire from, not just to work in. But you got to get in touch with the God of all glory. He is the only one that can change it. Thank you. God bless you. I want to ask you, we want to keep praying for you on YouTube. And we want to keep believing God for a change in your situation. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Everybody please stand. We want to pray.